We play for our schools, teammates, fans, families, and alums. Wow, he walks in, fires, he scores! We play for our jerseys. We play for our league. In and across the line, kicks it to his forehand, swings it back over, scores! We play with passion and pride. 60, 65 minutes, we stay together. We are yesterday's heroes. We are today's champions. We are tomorrow's legends. We are the WCHA. Tradition starts here. Coming up on Inside the WCHA, we will be joined by Bemidji State's head coach, Tom Saratori, to discuss his team's impressive sweep over Bowling Green. Plus, we'll preview each of the games that are coming up this weekend. But first tonight, we break down all the action that took place last weekend. We welcome you inside this episode of Inside the WCHA. I'm your host, Ryan Kassenschmidt, joined by my co-host, Andrew Jelkin. Thanks, Ryan. It's great to be here again tonight. Big slate of games last weekend, but first, let's start off with this very interesting stat. Bemidji State and Alabama Huntsville were both picked to finish 6th and 9th, respectively, in the preseason coaches' poll. Both teams currently stand 2-0 in league play. Now we'll get into those highlights from those teams, plus all the other at league action from this past weekend. In the first of two WCHA matchups from this weekend, number 14 Bowling Green traveled to Bemidji to take on the Beavers. In Friday night's game, the Beavers were able to jump out to an early lead, netting two goals in the first 13 minutes, courtesy of WCHA Rookie of the Week, Zach Whitecloud, and junior forward Miles Fitzgerald. Bemidji State's goaltender Michael Bitzer was able to keep the Falcons out of the net for 45 minutes and one second, but sophomore forward Stephen Bayless was able to pu push a rebound across the line to get BGSU in the scoring column early in the third period. After that, Bitzer was able to stand tall in the net. Bemidji State would take the first game of the weekend 2-1. On Saturday night, the Beavers were again able to jump to an early lead with a goal from Brett Beauvais, 7.59 into the first period. Bowling Green was able to answer back much more quickly this time around as they netted things up at 1, just 3.40 into the second frame. However, the Beavers were able to have the much stronger third period in this one, netting three goals throughout the final frame. The Beavers finished the night with a perfect 8-4-8 mark on the penalty kill, moving to 13 for 13 on the season. The 4-1 victory completed the sweep for the Beavers and had in Bowling Green their first sweep since February of 2015. In another WCHA matchup last weekend, Michigan Tech traveled to Mankato to take on MSU. In the first meeting of the McNaughton Cup co-champions, the Mavericks and Huskies had a highly anticipated matchup. In Friday night's contest, Cole Huggins was great for the Mavericks, but the story of the night was Zeb Knutson, who tallied two goals for MSU to lead them to a 3-1 win. On Saturday, the Mavericks were able to fend off the Huskies on their way to a weekend sweep posting a 4-0 victory. Senior netminder Cole Huggins was able to record his 11th career shutout and the first shutout of the season in the WCHA. Over the weekend, the Mavericks were able to prove that they will be a force to be reckoned with in the WCHA this year. On to the Alaskas, as the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers traveled up north to take on both Alaska Anchorage and Alaska on Friday and Sunday, with the two Alaskas facing off on Saturday night. Friday night, Alaska Anchorage suffered its first season opening loss since 2000, ending a 15-year unbeaten streak with a 6-0 defeat to visiting Minnesota. The Gophers were able to break the game open with a three-goal third period. UAA junior goaltender Olivier Mantha recorded 33 saves on the night. On Saturday night, in a rare non-conference matchup between WCHA schools, Alaska opened its season with a 4-1 win over rival Alaska Anchorage. The Nanooks really got their season off to a fast start, recording three first period tallies. Justin Woods opened the scoring on the power play, followed by Taylor Munson and Riker Lee. Chad Staley added a third period marker, while Jarrett Brown scored the lone goal for the Seawolves. 
Alaska's senior goaltender Davis Jones made 19 saves in earning the win. On to Sunday night now as the Gophers this time faced off against Alaska in the final game of this three-day series. Alaska was able to hang tough with the number 13 Minnesota coming within 4-3 in the third period before the Gophers broke away with a couple of late goals for a 6-3 triumph. Zach Fry and Austin Veith both tallied goals for the Nanooks, while the first career goal by freshman Troy Van Teetering at the 13-14 mark in the, of the third period gave UAF hope. Northern Michigan faced off against Wisconsin in the Resch Center Series. Northern Michigan was able to best the Badgers on Friday night with a 3-2 win. Ate Tolvanen was big for the Wildcats on Friday as he made 27 saves to help Northern Michigan to victory, including 14 saves alone in the third period. On Saturday, the Badgers were able to salvage a split with the Wildcats, topping them 6-5 in the series finale. Although falling, Northern Michigan was able to make history as junior Robbie Payne became the first Wildcat in 10 years to have a five-point night. Ferris State's slow start continued with a pair of close losses to Western Michigan in a home-and-home -home series between the interstate rivals. Thursday night, the Bulldogs were able to spread out the scoring as Mitch Maloney, Jared Van Warmer, and Ryan Lowney all scored. In Friday night's contest, Bulldog sophomore Darren Smith stopped 39 of Western Michigan's 41 shots. Despite the outstanding effort, Ferris State fell 2-1 to, to the Mustangs. Senior forward Chad McDonald scored the lone goal for the Bulldogs on the power play with assists by freshman Taylor Fernandez and Craig Pelfrey. The Alabama Huntsville Chargers faced off with Hockey East affiliate Connecticut. Alabama Huntsville looked to continue their success from their sweep of Ferris State in their first series of the year. On Friday, the Chargers were shut out 6-0 by the Huskies after a three-goal first period for Connecticut that was too much of a deficit for the Chargers to overcome. Saturday fared no better for the Chargers as the Huskies were able to skate to a 4-0 win to complete the sweep. Andrew, a lot of big games this past weekend. What were your thoughts on all of them? You know, a couple teams really stood out to me this weekend as ones that really have a chance to push for that WCHA title. I really like the way that Minnesota State played at home against Michigan Tech. It was a really exciting matchup with the co-champions of last year's McNaughton Cup facing off for the first time. I think Minnesota State really made a statement in that game. Bemidji State also made a big statement to me this weekend. Uh, they were able to sweep Bowling Green, who was the preseason favorite this year. And I think that was a big series win for them. Well, we've seen enough of the highlights. Let's go to our Offensive, Defensive, and Rookie of the Week in the WCHA. Northern Michigan had quite the offensive outburst against Wisconsin, scoring eight goals total on the weekend. Junior forward Robbie Payne contributed to all but two of those goals. The junior from Gaylord, Michigan, picked up three goals and three assists total on the weekend. He also made a bit of Wildcat history, becoming the first Northern Michigan player to record a five-point game in 10 years. Payne ended up finishing the weekend with an impressive plus four rating. On the defensive side of things, two-time goaltending champion Cole Huggins from Minnesota State really came out strong against number 17 Michigan Tech. The Centennial Colorado native stopped 45 of 46 shots on his way to both victories for the Mavericks. His .978 save percentage and .5 goals against average both led the WCHA. He was also the only WCHA netminder to post a shutout on the weekend. The shutout was Huggins' 11th of his career, a Minnesota State record, and the most among active NCAA goaltenders. This week's Rookie of the Week is Bemidji State defenseman Zach Whitecloud. Playing on the Beavers' top power play unit, the freshman from Brandon, Manitoba scored BSU's first goal of the 2016-2017 campaign at the 6:15 mark of the first period Friday. Saturday, he earned an assist on the man advantage for Bemidji State's final goal in their 4-1 victory. White Cloud finished the weekend with four blocked shots, helping BSU hold the Falcons to only two goals. Thanks very much, Andrew. Coming up after the break, we are joined by Bemidji State's head coach, Tom Saratori. We'll ask him about his team's big sweep over Bowling Green this past weekend. Plus, later on in the show, we'll give you a preview of all the WCHA action that's headed your way this weekend. Shoots and it goes out, they post a score! Cats with a shorty and a 1-1 tie! Inside the WCHA is brought to you by BLC Studios, a division of Bethany Lutheran College. For more information, visit blc.edu. 
College hockey fans, you can now watch every game, every night, from your own home, from Anchorage to Alabama, Big Rapids to Bowling Green, and all points in between. All your favorite teams live on WCHA TV. Affordable season, monthly, and game day passes are available. Sign up today and don't miss a thing. Join us at WCHA.TV. Welcome back to Inside the WCHA. I'm joined now by Coach Tom Saratori of the Bemidji State Beavers. Great to have you on today, Coach. Glad to be on with you. Uh, we appreciate the time. So jumping right in, last weekend you had a really big series against Bowling Green, uh, number 14 in the nation, one of uh, a perceived top team in the WCHA. How big is it for your team to come out with a series sweep of them and get rolling right away to start the year? Well, I just think you want to come out of the block strong. It's, uh, it's hard to play catch-up hockey. Um, so you know you're, what you do on the early in the early going um, really can dictate what happens near the end of the season. So we got off to the right start. We gained a little confidence, and um, you know then we just move on to another tough opponent this weekend. You got uh, some very experienced players on your team: uh, Bitzer, Harms, O'Connor, just to name a few. And you've also got a very unique situation with the triplets of the Fitzgeralds. Uh, what kind of a team dynamic, team chemistry does that create in the locker room? No, it's a good dynamic. They're they're great kids when you. When, when you work hard like the three Fitzgeralds, there's never a problem there. They're, they're great kids. They work hard. They're good players. Um, they pay attention to detail. They're great to have around. And, um, no, and they're brothers through and through. Um, and there's, there's obviously some good little banter back and forth every now and then, which uh, keeps the locker room loose. You guys got a, a big series this weekend against NMU. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys have to do to stay focused and, you know, keep your role going? Well, I mean, you, the bottom line is worry about a couple things that you can control, how hard you work and how smart you work. And, uh, you know, we're, we're healthy. We, we, we gained some confidence last week. Um, they, won, they won a big game. They had a great series with the Wisconsin. So, no, every weekend brings different challenges. So um, every, every weekend is challenging in the WCHA. Uh, any given day, anybody can beat anybody. So we realize that. It doesn't matter who you're playing. So you better be prepared. Finally, Coach. The overriding theme of every season is always to bring home the McNaughton Cup and a WCHA Tournament Championship. What do you guys need to keep doing in order to get that, as well as improve upon as the season goes on? It's only October, but you got a long ways to go. Well, exactly. We don't want to get too premature. And uh, again, just, you know, obviously the only thing you can worry about is today. And that's what we're trying to control is worry about today. And, uh, but you have to have goaltending. You know, that's first and foremost. You have to have good goaltending if you want to advance on, if you want to win a championship. It's pretty difficult to do that with, with, with suspect goaltending. And you better have good special teams. And, um, you know, those are the things that are so critical. And uh, right now in the early going, there's a lot of penalties being called because of the new, the new standard. And um, if your penalty kill obviously is up to snuff as, as well as your power play, um, that's going to put you in pretty good shape right there. So um, I think it's, I think it's in every, every league is the same. Get goaltending, have good special teams, and, uh, you know, hopefully again, you know, score some timely goals when you need some timely goals being scored. That's all the time we have for today. We appreciate uh, Coach Tom Saratori of the Bemidji State Beavers for joining us today. We appreciate it, Coach. Thanks for having me. Still to come, we've got previews of all the WCHA games that are on the docket for this weekend. Stick around. We'll be right back. Troy Van Tiemann. Inside the WCHA is brought to you by BLC Studios, a division of Bethany Lutheran College. For more information, visit blc.edu. College hockey fans, you can now watch every game, every night, from your own home. From Anchorage to Alabama, Big Rapids to Bowling Green, and all points in between. All your favorite teams live on WCHA TV. Affordable season, monthly, and game day passes are available. Sign up today and don't miss a thing. Join us at WCHA.TV. Welcome back to Inside the WCHA. So far, we've gone through some of last weekend's highlights, looked at some of the scores there. We've also interviewed Bemidji State's head coach, Tom Saratori. So now, let's take a look at some of the upcoming games for this weekend. Michigan Tech and Alabama Huntsville are both looking to rebound this weekend. They will face off in Houghton starting Friday night. In our other WCHA matchup of the weekend, Bemidji State looks to stay hot as they travel to Northern Michigan to take on the Wildcats. There's quite a bit of non-conference games to be played this weekend as well. 
Bowling Green looks to get into the win column as they play a home-and-home -home series with Western Michigan. A few of the Michigan schools will battle it out as Lake Superior State hosts Michigan State on Friday and Ferris State hosts Michigan on Saturday. Number 13 ranked Minnesota State hosts in-state rival St. Cloud State on Friday and Saturday. And last but certainly not least, the Bryce Alaska Goal Rush is taking place this weekend. Host schools Alaska Anchorage and Alaska Fairbanks will face off against the University of Nebraska Omaha and Canisius College on Friday and Saturday. Every single WCHA team sees action this weekend, Andrew. What are your thoughts on the games? Ryan, I think that this weekend is going to be really interesting for Michigan Tech as they take on Alabama Huntsville. It'll be interesting to see if the Chargers can continue that success that they had in the first series of the year against Ferris State, but it'll also be nice to see if Michigan Tech can get in the win column for the first time this year. Bemidji State's got a lot of uh, keeping up to do if they want to continue their success in the WCHA like they did last weekend against Bowling Green. And there's a lot of non-conference matchups this weekend that look to be really exciting. Hopefully the WCHA will fare well in all of those. Andrew, you know, we always appreciate your analysis. That's all the time we have for today's edition of Inside the WCHA. For highlights, news, and inside scoops, please join us on the next edition of Inside the WCHA. I'm Ryan Kassenschmidt. He's Andrew Jelkin. Thanks for joining us, and have a great night.